chapter 4.3 says yesterday we looked at linear functions actually that was last week uh, because we did change the pace um, that would be last week's lesson but we did look at linear functions uh, we learned that a function is linear if a rate of change is consistent throughout the relationship uh, we learned that m is the symbol for rate of change which will always be that and we learned to use the equation y equals mx plus b to create a rule um, today what we're going to do is work with nonlinear functions uh, while checking the rate of change of a relation, we know that it is nonlinear if any of the rates change or are not the same. Um, I'm sorry, if any of the rates of change are not the same, I'm sorry. Uh, the particular functions that we encounter will be a type x to the second, x to the third, although on homework you are going to encounter x to the fourth, but not so much for um, anything outside of just practice. Our job has two parts. First, we have to learn to identify which type it is, and then we have to learn to create a new rule for that type. Oh, there goes my pen. So why is finding the rule for nonlinear functions different than finding the rule for linear functions? Because the graph is not a straight line, it does not fit a set formula. Instead, we have to organize the information and kind of work through the process. Uh, linear functions utilize x as the variable. This is because we find the match on the first check. In other words, x to the first. So match on the first check is x to the first. This here represents the number of checks we had to do before it matched and because our m's were the same on our first match we could leave it as a x. Nonlinear functions have a second or third check before we find a match. Uh, the rules for these are as follows again if it takes two checks to make a match it'll be x to the second. If it takes three checks to make a match it'll be x to the third. So if you want to know what type of function it is below I would copy this here. Uh, pause yourself for a moment if you need to to write these down but here's how you check. You still do the same thing, 2nd minus 1st, 5 minus 4 is plus 1, 9 minus 5 is plus 4, 18 minus 9 is plus 9, 34 minus 18 is plus 16. And notice how they don't match. That means it can't be x because if it was x, then you know it would match right here. So we have to do a second level check, that is plus 3, 9 minus 4 is 5. 16 minus 9 is 7. Notice that that's not it, so therefore it's not x to the second because that's two checks, so therefore it's not x to the second. But when you do 5 minus 3, that's plus 2. When you do 7 minus 5, that's plus 2. It means that this would be x to the third because it took one, two, three levels of checks to get there. That is what you are doing today, and honestly, the homework is pretty straightforward as long as you kind of get that down. But that is the main point of you being able to identify how many times you have to check to make it match. Now, the hard part is on the test, you're going to have ones that match on the first, and you have to use the y equals mx plus b like we did last week. You're also going to have second and third level checks on there that you need to be ready for. So today's focus is nonlinear functions, but again, after this week, everything is going to be put back together to make sure you know what's going on. So now that you've seen how to identify, it's time to see how to create a rule. Uh, unfortunately, there is no formula to make this a direct process. It's just going to take patience and practice. Uh, but again, I believe you can do it if you follow my advice. What you want to do is identify the type. Is it a two second power, third power, fourth power, whatever it might be? And then you want to make a chart. And again, make sure you copy exactly what I do because the homework is going to kind of practice that skill. And if you don't copy the homework notes, then you're going to be asking questions. I'm going to ask to see your notes at that point, and then you have to go back and take them anyway. So go ahead and copy down what we're going to be doing to answer these. But the key thing is you make your chart and you determine what we call the shift and then we write the rule all at, at the end. So again, um, consider the example above. Um, I'm not really going to go back to that, but again, what we would have done, identify the type, this would be x to the third, and so what we would do, again, don't copy this yet, but what we will do now that we know that it's x to the third is we would put a table with an x here, x to the third there, and a y there, and we would literally just copy the points. That's x and y. So you'd put 0 here, 4 there. You would put 1 here, 5 there. 2 for x, 9 for y. Again, we're just copying it over. 3 here, 18 there, and then finally 4, 34. Again, don't copy this. This is just what we're going to be doing. But again, this rule says that what we want to do is take our x and cube it. 0 times 0 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, 4 times 4 times 4 is, what's, <laughs> 4 times 
4 times 4 is 16, 64. But anyway, when you do that, you would then be looking for the change between these numbers here, and you'd go from there, and that would give you the answer that you need, which we don't have here because um, the reason why I don't really spend a lot of time on chapter 4 is, I'm sorry, yeah, chapter 4 in general is because it shows you some things that you can do, but really it's not the things that you're going to be doing once you get into chapter 5. So let's just go ahead and get to the point here and move from there. So again, what we want to do when it says write a rule, first thing we want to do is see if it matches on the first. So we, again, copy this problem and copy this work. 2 minus 0 is 2, 16 minus 2 is 14, 54 minus 16 is 38, 128 minus 54 is 74. Obviously that's not x. If this was a match that would just be a regular x and you would use y equals mx plus b but again we're not going to do that. So this is plus 12, this is plus I believe 24, and this is I believe 36. That means it's not an x squared because that's our second check. What we'll do now is plus 12 and plus 12 which means that this is x to the third. Again you'll notice I have a lot of room on this page because there's no telling how much room it'll actually take. So again what I want to do now, now that I've identified the base, that's what I call this on the work, this is a base of x to the third. It means that x to the third is your general pattern generator. It's just from there where we're supposed to be doing. So what we do now is we make our table x, our base, and y. And we fill out our x, y again 0, 0 1, 2, 2, 16, 3, 54, and 4, 128. And then from there, you fill in this part of your chart. So 0 to the third, again, if you don't know what that is, use your calculator. It does not hurt, but you could just do 0 times 0 times 0, which is 0. 1 to the third, just verifying on the calculator so you see that I'm not lying to you, is 1, 2 to the third is 8. It also does help if you memorize these things. 27 and 64. Now, once you have made your chart, you can ignore this because we no longer care about this. We are looking at how are we getting from this number to that number in such a way that is consistent for all these points. You are either adding, subtracting, or multiplying. Well obviously we're not adding anything because here I would have to add 1, here I would have to add 8, and once you change the number that means that can't be it. You're obviously not subtracting anything, so let's check multiplication. I don't want to do 0 because that really doesn't make sense to multiply because anything times 0 is 0, but what do you multiply 1 by to make it a 2? You would multiply it times 2. Well look, 8 times 2 is 16, 27 times 2 is 54, 64 times 2 is 128, which means that our adjustment is times 2. And so all we have to do now is take our rule, combine with our adjustment, and our rule would be, obviously, if you're multiplying by 2, you would put 2 x to the third, and that would be it. Again, if I were to take 2 x to the third, 2 times 0 to the third, notice how I get my 0. 2 times 1 to the third. Notice how I get my answer of 2. 2 times 2 to the third. Notice how I get my answer of 16. So that rule generator still works. It's just different. Now you won't see a lot of multiplication stuff in your work, but it's just good for you to see that that exists. Again, sometimes it's add, sometimes it's subtract, sometimes it's multiply. I don't think you'll really see anywhere you, anywhere you really divide, but again, in your experience, that's just pretty much what you're looking at there. Another example, again here, 2 minus negative 1 is up 3. I'm just going to do this more out of my own experience because it takes forever hitting buttons. This is plus 5. This is plus 7. This is plus 9. Obviously because it did not match on the first, it's not linear. It's not a regular x. But when you do your second check, it means that our base rule is x squared because it only took two checks. So again, what we will do is make a table, x, our base, and y. 
We will copy the information here, 1, negative 1, 2, 2, 3, 7. Most of this is just patience. And then you go through and fill out the part. Again, squared just means 1 times itself, which is 1, 2 times itself, which is 4, 3 times itself is 9, 4 times itself is 16, 5 times itself is 25. And again, once that's done, we don't need this anymore though on the computer you can't really eliminate it but on your paper now you're looking to see what am I doing with this column to turn into the last column and so to me I don't want to pick numbers that are difficult to work with so I'll leave that alone because I may not like negatives but let's look here how do I turn 4 into a 2 well obviously I'm not adding but if I was subtracting I would subtract 2 what about 9 to get to 7 I think again I would subtract 2 16 to 14 subtract 2 subtract 2 and yes 1 minus 2 is negative 1 which means that my adjustment is minus 2 and so I put my base with my adjustment to get the answer of y equals x squared minus 2 so again first thing you gotta do is find the base second thing you gotta do is analyze your chart at least the second and third column to say what am I doing with the second column to make it into the third column and again, that would be your pattern generator, your rule that you are looking for. Again, it takes patience. You have to practice this. Good news is we're only doing two sections this week, so you have time to get more practice in and ask questions as long as you're working on time, not waiting till the weekend like some people are doing. But that's on you. Other than that, again, here we've got another part here. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Uh, negative 1 minus 1 is minus 2. No. Yes, minus 2. Negative 3 minus 1 is down 2. Negative 5 minus 3 is down 2. But look at this. This is actually a match on the first, which means it's just x. And because that's x, that means that for this, and again, you cannot forget about it, you would actually use your y equals mx plus b, picking one point because your M is whatever that match is, which is negative 2. Again, this is last week's work, where when that match, that's your rate of change, which means that's my M. My Y in this case is 3. Again, hopefully you remember this. Your M is your rate of change, which is negative 2. Your X is the point that goes with it, and then you work through it. And remember that in the end, you plug in your M and your B, so negative 2X plus 5 would give you what you're looking for. All right. I would verify that, but again, there's really no point. I know it's right because I'm doing 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 5 would be 1. That would be negative 6 plus 5, which is negative 1. That would be negative 8 plus 5, which is negative 3. But again, that's generally what you're looking at there. It's a very direct um, process, but again, you need to make sure you know when to use the formula versus when to use the table. The formula of y equals mx plus b only works when it's linear, like what we just saw. Otherwise, you're going to have to organize and analyze and get that stuff done. But again, I hope you took good notes because really that's what it's about is just kind of making sure you're um, up, to this, up to the task of using that process to your best ability. Don't forget to answer the question at the very end to get your uh, points for watching this video. But other than that, here are the notes that I had for you if you needed them. Good luck.